Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Week 15 time. The rest of the matchups on today's show, we got a special giveaway coming up, and Jason tries to use words correctly. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Is it Friday the 13th? Yep. Ooh, Christmas edition. Krampus returns. <laughs> welcome into the show. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the fantasy footballers back with you. It's my son's birthday today. Birthday party. It's your son's birthday today. It's one of my son's birthdays. It's Taylor Swift's birthday today. Really? Yep. Why, do you, why do you know that? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? <laughs> no, I, I saw it on He's the Twitter. president of the fan club. Yeah. Uh, is that a Swifty? What, do you, what yeah. do you call it? A T-Swifty. Yeah, we're <laughs> T-Swifters. <laughs> Good. Good to know. Um, she turns 30 today. How embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Wait, what? Why do you know that? Where was she born, Jay? <laughs> uh, in my heart. No, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Move it along. Strange. Uh, welcome into the podcast. It's Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Now, it's a Foot Clan Friday for Ryan Pencil. Pencil. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. Because he wins a <laughs> a special little gift card to shopballers.com for $55. And uh, he's a supporter at jointhefoot.com. Thank you, Ryan. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. It's, pencil. It's pencil, yeah. But it's spelled. It's not spelled like any pencil I've used. Correct. But it's a special Friday. Pencilin. Yeah, it's kind of like that. <laughs> it's a special Friday because we are filming a little YouTube special right after this oh, show today. Oh, oh. We're feeling very generous, as is our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. We've teamed up with them. We're going to be giving away, uh, it's it's more than... Thousands of yeah. dollars worth of memorabilia. Yeah, we've got tons of autograph sports memorabilia. We don't know what's in all of these very nicely wrapped packages, but we will be opening them and giving them away we're going to give a ton of them away to uh, Foot Clan supporters from jointhefoot.com. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to give a bunch away to people that check out the video, comment, like it, subscribe, all that stuff. Well, we were going to give it away, but the truck that had all the stuff, when it stopped at my house, it was empty. Oh, no. So you stole. No, no, no. It showed up empty. Right. Hmm. Right. We'll have the police look into that. Yeah. <laughs> We should not do that. <laughs> YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers to check that out. Your chance to win. Um, and a shout out to Pristine Auction for, uh, you know, providing. It's going to be more than $2,500 worth of sports memorabilia that we're giving away. And I'm excited because I don't even know what's inside any of these packages. And a bunch of them are mystery boxes. And it's going to be awesome. So you can check that out on YouTube. We'll get that out on social media. Let's talk about the game last night. <sighs> no. Lamar Jackson. <laughs> We know which side Jason was on. 212 yards passing, five touchdowns, 86 yards rushing. Five touchdowns it, on 23 attempts. If you tell me the quarterback I'm going up against has 15 completions for 212 yards, I am thrilled. That's that's awesome. I win. Oh, five, five passing touchdowns? Oh. We eight, don't stop there. 86 rushing yards? He's, he's such a cheat code. It's... It's not fair, but it's awesome. And and everybody, you know, we were high on Lamar Jackson coming into this year, but I don't in the in the in the, you know, the few major leagues I play in, I I just didn't get him anywhere. Someone someone took him before I did and it stinks. It stinks not having This is like the Lamar Jackson year. Yeah. It is. You know, no doubt. I mean, he, he went into the game I think with 35 total touchdowns on the season already and added another 5 to the total. It was. It seemed very, very, very easy for him to do what he did last night. 42-21 was the final score. And for those of you out there that were, you know, facing Lamar Jackson, hoping that this quad was going to slow him down, 
I mean, you got run over by a Mack truck last night. And now you have to try to survive it. And then it, it like, backed up and it, to see if you're okay, but it accidentally ran over you again. again. Yeah. And then it realized it ran over you twice, so it fled the scene. This was the truck running that, you over again. That had all of the packages in it. <laughs> oh, what, what packages? But Mark Ingram was great, 13 for 76. This is what you get with Mark Ingram. You always get between... How does he do this? 11 of because the team is the it's the best offense in football and they score on the highest percentage of their drives and it's just what they do. So 13 for 76 and a touchdown. Mark Ingram also the world's ultimate hype man. Oh, I don't, yes, I don't he know if is. you guys have been following what Mark Mark Ingram has been doing when he introduces Lamar Jackson, but he did it again last night. Mark Ingram I like. I don't want him to retire because he's. I, I love Mark Ingram. He's been a fantasy stud for years and years. But when the man retires, get him in a booth immediately because this dude is awesome. Would you like to describe what he did? Well, he just he. So they give him the microphone, and he's a hype man. Before Lamar Jackson comes in and talks, he just starts. Just inflating the ego, like, here comes L. Jackson. He is the man. I've been telling you for years. He is the sickest, and he just goes on and the on. The MVP. But, but he does it way cooler than I can possibly do it. He's this amazing. Is, this is like a wrestling introduction or yes. something? Okay. That's pretty awesome. He also had an awesome game. I yes. Mean, he, he set you up. Caught a, pat, uh, uh, a touchdown as well. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, Lev Bell on the other side had... Uh, His best rushing game of the season. 87 yards. <laughs> 23 touches, 87 yards, no touchdowns. Jamison Crowder, 6 for 90 and two touchdowns. No Demarius Thomas last night. That stinks. I mean, that, that stinks because nobody nobody out there in the playoffs playing Jamison Crowder right now off the back of three poor games in a row. And to have him go out and dominate is just unfortunate for fantasy purposes. Uh, but he looked great. Mark Andrews. Four catches, 52 yards, and a touchdown. Mm -hmm. He's just really good. I, I, you know, we were bailed out in the sense that, we, you know, we were talking about all these other great options. Maybe you could pivot to Ian Thomas, but you don't know the health of Greg Olson. You would pivot, uh, you know, to Higby, but you don't know the health of Everett. So you're just going to have to take it and start Mark Andrews. Oh, shame. And then, you know, it's like, oh, thank goodness. Because, right. you know, it, he's been playing injured all year. Was it was and that Mark Andrews? There was a play where uh, there was a tight end. I mean, he was streaking down the field wide open. Wide open. open. Okay, that, was, was that was Andrews, yes. Yeah. So that he was so had another... close to an 80-yard touchdown. Yes. All right, let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. All right, injury news, very important. In or out on the show today, Jameis Winston. He's throwing tennis balls, so we're okay. I think he plays. Faces Detroit, I think he plays as well. Bruce Arians hopes he can play. I, I would hope that too. Josh Jacobs. I'll say in. I think he's going to play as well. James Conner. In. Juju Smith-Schuster. Not in. He uh, has been ruled out. He re-aggravated his knee. Uh, in Thursday's practice. So he is definitely not playing. Um, I think, you, you know, Deontay yep. Johnson. Has not been ruled out, but is not expected to play. Yep. And then Devontae Parker and Jared Cook. 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 Jared Cook. Jared Cook. Jared Cook. They are both limited in practice it's coming off of the concussion. The fact that they're limited in practice, they're at least trending towards playing, but monitor the situation. Yeah, they're part of the game plan. Yep. If you're out there in practice, you you got to hope that they clear – Jared Cook is a Monday night game. Jared Cook. With, with Cook? Jared Cook. But the good, that's good news and bad news for Cook because <laughs> the reality here is that that gives him an extra day to pass concussion protocol. The nice thing is if you can pick up Jack Doyle, who's also Monday night, that gives you that, the, you know, if, if Cook can't go, <laughs> then you've got the uh, pivot option. You can but pivot to Josh Hill in an emergency. If, you are, if you're 95% sure that Jared Cook is going Cuke. to play – then Josh Hill is a, a backup, emergency play there too. Yeah, and obviously Jared kuke has been great, <laughs> and I would really like to play Kuke. He's the you done <laughs> you done with it? I'm never going to be done. He's he's the uh, number two tight end behind Zach Ertz over number the last four two. weeks. That being said, it, it has come on the back of touchdowns, mm -hmm. which is obviously the that's nice. 
Well, it, it's nice when you get them, but the it's volume. tight the, end. I mean, the it's target Dubreeze. volume hasn't been up there with the other guys in in that. You know. Well, certainly last week, two targets, two touchdowns, knocked out with a concussion. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Don't miss the big updates on Sunday morning, one hour before kickoff. It sounds like Jason and I will both be on oh, Sunday live. Oh, 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 we're gonna burn it down, probably. And then uh, game day alerts at jointhefoot.com. Let's get back into the forecast. Fantasy forecast. You guys like my sweater? I I actually very festive. Love your sweater because you're saying I'm a Cardinal fan, but Christmas is more important. I was gonna say my sweater is three nine and one. That's yeah. the record. It's very festive though. It is. It, it I. I love those. I was I'm giving away a lot of gifts today, so it seemed like I needed to. I mean, I think we got some Santa hats. Look like too. a loser. I, I need to be three <laughs> nine and one. But, it, the, but sweater, it, the sweater's fantastic. Yeah. But thank you. The team is just they're they're bringing shame upon all of us. Well, we we'll talk about their matchup shortly. Broncos, Chiefs, Buccaneers, Lions, Texans, Titans, Dolphins, Giants, Seahawks, Panthers, Bears, Packers, Patriots, Bengals. If you heard me just say a team name, it was on yesterday's show. We did those matchups yesterday you can listen to that episode if you want them if you want to hear them again because you heard them yesterday and you're like that was so good i want to hear them broken down again exactly the same way you can re-listen to yesterday's episode Yes, it might be a little different you'll you'll have to you'll listen. have to listen again we changed one thing <laughs> can See you if find it <laughs> eagles at six and seven battling for the division against the washington redskins at three and ten Eagles are four and a half point road favorites. It's a thirty nine point over under. Oh, oh. that's uh, Mike's <laughs> your visceral reaction oh, to the game. Bro, what is this? A Buffalo game? It's a Dwayne Haskins game. Mm. The problem is on one side of the ball, you have the Eagles with a, a, a serviceable to good quarterback in Wentz who has no weapons to throw the ball to, and on the other side, you have a quarterback who can't throw the ball to anyone so that's where you get a low over under and you know I the, the Redskins defense lately has been surprisingly stout yeah I'm a little worried about this game in general for the the Eagles side because it's a divisional game and the Redskins like you said over their last eight games they've allowed the eighth fewest fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks you saw it last week I mean they played Aaron Rodgers this is supposed to be a smash game Rodgers didn't do much I'm playing the Eagles defense everywhere. Yeah, they're my like semifinal matchup of choice, so I've got them plugged in all over the place because Dwayne Haskins can't do anything. Remember when these teams were cool, Week One, and it was thirty-two to twenty-seven. Wentz had three hundred and three. Case Keenum had nearly four hundred yards and three. I thought you were going way back. I thought you were saying like no RG three and Michael Vick. You don't even have to do that because Week One it was awesome. Well, that, that Terry just McLaurin, means did Deshaun Jackson. These guys were cool. Yeah. Yeah, not so cool anymore. No. But probably a victory for the Eagles in this one to get them to 500 to it, compete. It with. better be. <laughs> and I believe, is Dallas is the Dallas game next week, Brooks? Yes, the Dallas Eagles game is. That'll be exciting. <laughs> that, right? will, that will be an awesome. Who won't lose? Yeah, <laughs> yeah somebody <that's... laughs> won't lose the division. Now, I will say this. I'm, I'm looking up the, the last five weeks of the Redskins for specificity and looking how they have been against certain positions. Um, 22nd against quarterbacks, 22nd against running backs, 28th against wide receivers. They've been pretty stout, at, uh, meaning they're, they're the, the uh, very difficult to score on. But tight ends have actually they've, – they've, they've been the fourth best matchup and now you've got across the field the Zach Ertz, Dallas Goddard show. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're always playing Zach Ertz anyways, and he's been the number one tight end for a while. But it brings Dallas Goddard into the picture a little bit. I feel like I've said that so many times about Dallas Goddard over the last four weeks. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, done with the, I'm done with the narrative of there's limited weapons. Like, that, that one doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is something like that, where, like, they're very vulnerable to the tight end position. But, you know... He hasn't had smash games in the absence of Nelson Aguilar, Alshon Jeffrey, etc. He had a touchdown against New England, but it hasn't been a gold mine like you hoped for. Right. Because the offense has just been stagnant and slow and slow pace of play and just kind of 
difficult to watch. And last week it was ugly until it wasn't at the very end. And you were waiting for, at least I was waiting for these injuries to cause Dallas Goddard to be more involved in the actual, like, more snaps. But the last two weeks, he's been out there, you know, 57, 68% of snaps. There's been so many plays. He's not even on the field. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm curious about that from a from a coaching standpoint when you need pass catching weapons. Yeah, you, but when they needed him, it was Joshua Perkins at the end of the game. Exactly. It's, so it's that's weird. why I was wondering if he was injured or something. But it, it's it makes it hard to trust Goddard even in a plus matchup without the other weapons. No change in the status of Jordan Howard at all. Jeez. So we're going to go going to go into this game with Miles Sanders and Boston Scott. I'm not chasing the Boston Scott points. Okay. I know that he was picked up everywhere, and I, I guess you kind of have to do that. But, you know, this was a pivot mid-game. This was Miles Sanders banged up. Well, M Miles Sanders dehydrated. He had he had the cramps. Yeah, he was out for a little while. He needed the IV. Do you do you look at Boston Scott with flex rele like I relevance? Look at, I look at him if you're a desperate person in need. I am a but, desperate person, Mike. Well, then, you're then Boston Scott. Could I interest you in a running back who had 128 total yards? Yeah, I mean, he he was great. I believe he was the running back seven last week. He was the spark plug that got them going. And now, you know, out of Philadelphia, everybody's talking about uh, – they, they're excited about him taking on that Darren Sproles role. Now, would you – rely on that for a playoff matchup yeah, I, if, if that's the role that it, they're really excited about I mean Darren Sproles was very limited in the terms of touch so so I think you've got to question him in the same way that you've got Patrick Laird uh, you know Patrick Laird is I not doing Laird. it on the ground he's doing it as a receiver same as Boston Scott yeah you, I would take Patrick Laird easily okay well then that means you're not playing Boston Scott yeah if it's an easy choice for Laird Scott is yeah, not La in consideration. Laird is on that running back to edge. My and for Miles Sanders, he didn't come through with a, any fantasy game of note. It was one of those that was tough because he had they finally got on the goal line. He had the cramps. He was off the field as Boston Scott. He got stuffed on the goal line. Uh, so, but he still had twenty opportunities in those in, in his limited snaps. You know, fifty six percent of the snaps last week. I think they. I think it goes back to predominantly Miles Sanders. You could still count on him in this matchup. When the Eagles had to come back last week, right? They had to battle back, and that's where the pass catching, you know, Sprolesy role is more prominent. Otherwise, Nelson Aguilar didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday. I don't think he's going to play again. Alshon's on IR. Ortega Whiteside is not good enough. Not yet. Greg no. Ward is Greg Ward. Yeah, and then on the other side, you got Terry McLaurin who plays for the Redskins. Last week he was actually, you know. I'm okay with Terry. Okay. I'm okay with Terry this Eagles week. Eagles secondary is defunct. See yeah. Darius Slayton last week. So yeah. you're okay with Terry? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with him because the Haskins is at least feeding him. I mean, like 12 targets three weeks ago. F four, that one against the Carolina, that game kind of fell apart. But seven targets against Green Bay, four for 57 with a touchdown. I'm, I, I'm okay playing him. When I say okay, he's a three. He's a flex type of player. He unfortunately he, where he was kind of emerging as a two, but I would play him. I, I love week. I love McLaurin's uh, ability, uh, but I I'm not playing Terry McLaurin since week seven. So this is a, a a very large sample now that we're you know in week fifteen. Do you know what wide receiver he is? And this is including his his good game this last week. He is wide receiver. <laughs> oh. And he saw that one coming. Uh, yes. So, I mean, I'm, I'm just not relying on Haskins based on the fact that McLaurin is, is good and can get open. I, I, I just don't want to do that in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like him. I'm with Mike on this one. Eagles showed me what happens mm -hmm. against their secondary, but it's just – it's tough. It's not an exciting game. And Adrian Peterson is a fine volume play as we've been talking about. Adrian the Peterson or the Patrick stinks. Laird? Adrian Peterson. Oh, Eileen Laird. Laird. Yeah. I'll take the pass catching. All right, Brown, 6 and 7, Cardinals 3, 9 and 1. They're at home, but they're three-point underdogs. This line has changed, I believe. I think it was a two-point line yesterday. Mm, went to Maybe Brown. I'm wrong. 49-point yeah. over under. Kyler Murray has been real bad the last 2 weeks both at home. I believe he was Pro Football Focus's worst ranked 
passer in both weeks. Yes. Congrats. <laughs> Uh, Arizona, the defense allowing 294 passing yards per game. This is why Mike has Baker Mayfield as his stream of the week. Yeah, you can you can rely on it. They've been the Cardinals have been massacred by everyone not named Duck Hodges. He can kill ducks, but what but do he you can't do, kill? What Cardinal. do you do with Kyler? Because I I've, there are multiple uh, people that have you know texted me, messaged me. Looking at the Jameis Winston hand situation, looking at other streaming options like Ryan Fitzpatrick and saying, do you go Kyler at home against the Browns Oof. defense? Or, you know, because before the two bad weeks, Kyler has, had been pretty darn good. But Cleveland hasn't allowed a 300-yard passer. They, they're they okay, middle-of-the-pack defense. What do you do with Kyler? I mean, you, you I, th I think Kyler can be – started because of his rushing ability you look at the Browns and you know the last five weeks when they've been beaten you know uh, by Fitzpatrick who ha has turned into the the running game as well for uh the Miami Dolphins and and Josh Allen they they can be beaten by mobile quarterbacks so that's kind of why I'm okay starting him I'm not thrilled to start Kyler because obviously these last two weeks have been Horrendous. Would you in this matchup? Would you rather stream Baker off the waiver wire or pick up or play Kyler, who's on your team? I would rather play Kyler. I, I would rather play the home quarterback who has a better history this season of good fantasy finishes, who also has the rushing baseline that Baker doesn't necessarily have. The upside, if one of these guys was to go nuclear, I would assume. You know, if if one guy gets four passing touchdowns, it's probably Baker. But I, right. I would I would I would think the uh, safer option is Kyler. Mike, are you on the Baker side? I I am. Yeah, I, they're pretty close. Our consensus rankings yeah. have Baker at ten, Kyler at twelve. I lean the guarantee of Baker because I feel like the way Kyler's playing right now scares me. Yes. All right, in the backfield in Arizona, David Johnson did have a touchdown last week. But I believe he had five touches in the game. <laughs> David Johnson had three carries and two receptions, so you are correct. But they were all good Six touches. Six yards per carry, They though. were all good touches. Like, when you, wa when you watched, yeah, I mean, what are you going to take away from him, Mike? Yeah, I will. Why? We, what, what are you going to take away? I mean, he, he played better last week. He had three carries. Yeah, and they were good carries. Yeah. Are you saying you 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 don't think he has a chance of taking more of the market share this week? No, I'm that yes, that is what I'm saying. I they gave him three carries. I uh, I concur. I, I wouldn't touch David Johnson in fantasy with a ten foot pole, hoping Grinch that, style that somehow they see what they did last week. They're going to give him more work, enough work to be f fantasy relevant. I mean, that's not to say he didn't look gr good on those three carries, but you can't bank on all of a sudden he's going to get ten to twelve touches this week because he was good on his three carries last week. He had 21 snaps. Drake had 38. Edmonds, 11. There are a lot of fantasy owners of David Johnson in dynasty leagues and keeper leagues that, you know, would like to see some yeah. you know, production from him. I mean, if you have a key and it was a better week last week for David Johnson than it had been in, like, five weeks. Yeah. It, if we're talking long-term, Kenyon Drake is a free agent after this year, and David Johnson is still under contract, so it's not – you don't abandon all hope if you have him on your dynasty league. You, you're not feeling great about it, but there's there's at least a sliver of hope. Nick Chubb's in your lineup. Kareem Hunt, is he in your lineup? The number five start sit question this week is Kareem Hunt versus Raheem Mostert. Yeah, I mean, Kareem Hunt, his involvement in the passing game. The, I've had, I feel that a lot of Kareem Hunt questions where I haven't necessarily gone Hunt because the other options were great. But Kareem Hunt, listen to his fantasy finishes since he's been back. The running back 18, the running back 30 against Pittsburgh, the running back 16, 16, 15. I mean, he's, he's just pretty consistent because of that pass catching work, and this is a plus matchup. So I think if you want, he's he's a he's a running back too, week in and week out so far. All right, other question marks in this game. I'd stay away from David and Joku now. The knee injury, that's not what he was coming back off of IR for. He it's a new injury, so you know he came back with the wrist. Oh, oh, oh. I'm not looking at Ricky Seals Jones no. at all. Revenge game. Sure. No, I, I'm not either. I just wanted the joke. And then Jarvis Landry <laughs> is Mike's start of the week. Yeah, he's going to crush. 
Odell Beckham. You have to play him against Arizona if you're going to – I mean, right? Yeah, yeah, you do. You have to. Yeah, reluctantly. Christian Kirk, 8 for 95 last week against Pittsburgh. I thought that was a good performance from Christian Kirk. I think he's a uh, wide receiver 2, 3 situation. Yeah, he's he's my wide receiver 21 this week at home in a matchup against the Browns that are middle of the road. Kirk has looked fine. I mean, it, this is really just which Kyler are you going to get? Because if Kyler comes out and has a good game, then Christian Kirk's going to have a, a solid performance. Larry Fitzgerald, Mike, you looking his way at all? No. Nope. Unfortunately not. All right, before we get into this next matchup, I want to thank Omaha Steaks. You can give the holiday gift that families across America have loved for 100 years, Omaha Steaks. Right now they have their very special, every year we see this, an amazing limited-time holiday offer. You go to omahasteaks.com, you put the code FOOTBALLERS in the search bar, and you can get their, uh, their favorite gift package. It's their favorite. It'll be your favorite. $69.99. Here's what you get. Four six-ounce bacon-wrapped filet mignons, mm -hmm. four savory premium pork chops, mm -hmm. four Omaha Steaks burgers, four perfectly browned potatoes au gratin, mm. four made-from-scratch caramel apple tartlets, Whew. an Omaha Steaks signature seasoning packet, and a free cutlery set, a six-piece cutlery set. Mike? You know what you can do with that? Cook. It, you can mm, cook. You can cook. <laughs> you can cook it all. I called it back, fellas. You can cook every bit of it. <laughs> Order now and you get the favorite holiday gift package plus the free six-piece cutlery set. This is not like a two-piece or a three-piece. It's six pieces. It's not even five. Not it's even five. Six. $69.99. Go to omahasteaks.com. Type footballers in the search bar. That's omahasteaks.com. Type the code footballers. And to all the men out there losing your hair, what I'm up? right there with you. It can be devastating, but Roman has options for you. Look, this, this holiday season... Treat yourself. Oh. Get yourself, uh, you know, the, the, the gift of stopping hair loss. With Sorry, Roman. kids. <laughs> no Christmas <laughs> for you. Treat myself. I want hair. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, Roman has FDA approved options, which you know, a lot of people don't even know that there are FDA approved hair loss treatment options. They connect you with a U.S. licensed physician for a free online evaluation to see which treatment options will work the best for you. And if the doctor decides medication is right for you, then they deliver it right to your door in discreet packaging with free two-day shipping. You can go to GetRoman.com slash footballers to start your free online visit if you want to stop or prevent hair loss. Starting treatment early with Roman is key. Roman gets members started with a free online visit and free two-day shipping. Visit GetRoman.com slash footballers. That's GetRoman.com slash footballers for a free visit to get started. GetRoman.com slash footballers all right jacksonville at four and nine collapsing heads to oakland against the raiders at six and seven collapsing <laughs> raiders are six and a half point favorites 45 and a half point over under i thought about making this my almost upset but i don't care enough <laughs> <laughs> I totally get that. I was looking at this game. You know, we we do we do uh, picks in in the office here of just you know picking the winners of every game, a, a fun little uh, price pool. And um, I got to this game. I'm like, man, these two teams have just been t just on a downward spiral, and one of these teams has to not lose this week. So I just went with the home team. But, I, I mean, the, the, the vibes have just been so bad for these two teams over the last month. It's crazy because the Raiders are heavy favorites. They could get to 500, which seems like you're pretty happy as an organization through 14 games in Oakland, year two with John Gruden, at 7-7, seven seven, right? But yeah. it's, isn't it – it's quite different when you battle back to 7-7 seven and, seven and you're on a hot streak versus, like, kind of salvaging – it's just been gross for both of these teams. Jacksonville kind of seemed like they were going to be competitive to start this year. You went from Gardner to Foles back to Gardner, who hasn't looked good since his return. They lost Ramsey on defense at first just holding out and saying he doesn't want to be there and then getting traded. Um, and and that's, that's obviously caused a lot of domino effects on that defense because the Jacksonville defense, which was once mighty, is 
and it's just a smash play. Like, you know, the the yep. Mike, your start of the week is Josh Jacobs or DeAndre Washington. Yep, doesn't whoever, matter. Whoever gets the luxury they're allowing, of facing the Jaguars. They're allowing 230 yards a game. Like, it's preposterous how bad they are. To running backs. To running backs. To yes. running backs, yeah. That's that's a lot. <laughs> that is. A hundred is a lot. Impressive work. There's a reason Josh Jacobs and then if he's out, DeAndre Washington are, are guaranteed auto starts this week at the running back position. The Raiders defense is, is really bad as well. If you look at how they rank over the course of the season, you know, they're they're terrible. They're in the bottom ten against every single position. Leonard Fournette, he's in your lineup. He has been for a while. DJ Chark has not practiced. The last thing I read is that he's pushing hard to play in this game. Is that, if he's active, is he of what's the... he going to play on his scooter? Is he of the tier and ability? Zero. Nine for 75 last I, week in limited work. He's a good player, but he's on a scooter. Yeah, but are you going to play? Let me let me give you a situation, Mike. DJ Chark is active. Okay. Do you play him over Larry Fitzgerald? I think you do. Yeah. Do you play him over Christian Kirk? No. No. I think you do. I'll play Kirk. I would definitely play Kirk. I don't. I. I'm not of the opinion that if a guy is active, I'm gonna. Who has that kind of ability against the worst defense, maybe in football, giving up the most twenty plus yard plays to a guy that has probably the most twenty plus yards play yard plays in football. I'm just gonna put him in. Do you want to play him or Adam Thielen? Oh, I'll play G, play DJ Shark. Okay. Yeah, I'm terrified of Adam Thielen. So. That's one of those ones where it's been it's been a while, and he's burned you since he's come back. Are you you're both afraid of Chark if he's active? Yes, yeah. I I am afraid of Chark if he's active. This is an injury that was expected to keep him out pretty you know conclusively, and so he's pushing to play. That's great. I, I he still did don't. he traveled with the team, and that and that's great. I on his scooter, <laughs> right? He's like, I'll see you there. <laughs> I'm coming. Just tie the rope to the plane. Um, yeah, but I, I do, I worry about the limitations from the injury and then you take the injury away and you say, okay, well, he's obviously had some great games, especially with, with Gardner, but he's, you know, since week nine, he's been the wide receiver 31, which is, that's okay. It's not, it's not unusable for fantasy, but it's not like he's been how he was the first five weeks of the season when he was a top five wide receiver in a while. And then you add in the hobbled ankle. Now that the matchup is good, you know, I, and, and I, honestly, if he's back, I think it's great news for Gardner Minshew and for the over under in this line to just be able to move more. But I, I don't know that he's going to do enough to make you happy as a, as a fantasy owner. Gardner at, at one point in time was a, a pretty solid streaming candidate. He's not in this matchup. Is that where you're at because of the Chark injury and the momentum of this team? Yeah, that's where I lean. If Chark was active, Minshew probably would have been my streamer. Okay. D.D. Westbrook, without D.J. Chark, are you willing to play D.D.? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to play both D.D. and Chris Conley. I, if you have to choose between the two, I would go D.D. I, man. I guess I go Didi. He it seems like a a floor ceiling type of play. Let's okay. You played against Lamar Jackson last night, Jason. Yes. You playing Didi or are you playing Chris Conley? I am playing Didi because I expect Didi to have more fantasy points. But I get okay. I get your point is that if you're in one of those situations where you need a higher ceiling, you know we we saw someone say that they are pivoting from Marlon Mack to uh, Raheem Mostert. That that one makes a lot of sense. You you really want the ceiling play. Mac doesn't have the matchup that says multi touchdowns are are in the realm of possibility. But I don't know that Conley has any higher potential for a touchdown than D does. Now, according to Pro Football Focus, Trayvon Mullen will be guarding Chris Conley, and that is the DB that just gave up the two touchdowns to AJ Brown. Not saying that Chris Conley is AJ Brown. That's not what I'm saying, but. You, if you will allow big plays, no, no. All right, all right. I'm just I trying think, to talk. I think and... DJ Charles can have a monster game. <laughs> That's I believe it. You, you, DJ, yeah, but, DJ, DJ Chark, Chark is... is going to have a huge game against Oakland. He is on the precipice of both double-digit touchdowns and a thousand-yard season. He's trending the right direction. That's what I believe. I wouldn't play Didi or Chris Conley if Chark was active. That's where I was going to look. Yes. If if Chark surprises to me. 
not surprising sure, to Andy, absolutely, then, yeah. then I'm out on Conley. Tyrell Williams, news came out, still bothered by uh, plantar fasciitis. Maybe that explains why beginning of the year, Tyrell was so much more consistent looking than end of year. But uh, you can't play Tyrell Williams right now. There's no trust there. Darren Waller has a 23% target share. He's going to be in your lineup. Yes. Yeah. You have to play him. Outside of that, you're not looking at Derek Carr at all, despite how bad Jacksonville's been, because you've you, you just have better things to do with your life. <laughs> yeah, I mean you you know maybe Josh Jacobs or DeAndre Washington's touchdowns come via receptions. That's sure. that's how Derek Carr gets it done. But you're not going to bank on that because I think they're going to come via carries. Vikings nine and four take on the Philip Rivers led Chargers, who are five and eight. Chargers have allowed one top 12 quarterback performance this entire year. That's tied with the Ravens for the fewest. Kirk Cousins. What do you do with Kirk Cousins on the road then? Does he, because he has been so trustworthy as a fantasy quarterback, could have Adam Thielen back. Where are you at with Kirk Cousins? I'm following those matchups. And, and it, it's not just that they haven't allowed a, a single top 12 performance, and that was uh, Deshaun Watson in week three. But you're talking these quarterbacks are ending up in the 20s. And that includes – so Jacksonville last week, Denver the week before, not not tough matchups, but Kansas City was was four weeks ago. The Chargers defense against the pass is totally legitimate. Kirk Cousins, maybe if he was at home, I would be willing to do it, but I, I don't. And I like this is to the point of – I would. I, th I still lean picking the Vikings to win this game, but I. But the Chargers could easily end up winning. This is one part, that I thought about making the upset yeah. as well. I was right on the edge. Part of the reason that the the Chargers defense has been so good against quarterbacks against wide receivers is very similar to what we've seen uh, in Kansas City and in Buffalo, which is part of the reason is because they are very beatable on the ground. And if you look at the Vikings, part of it. I mean, just the sense of uh, whatever points are scored are divvied up to, to different positions, and when you can run on the team, uh, those points go to the running back position and not to wide receiver, not to quarterback. And this is a team in the Vikings that want to run the ball. They want to be a running and defensive-minded team. Great matchup here for Dalvin Cook. And so, yeah, I, I would hesitate to start Kirk. I don't think he's going to kill you. You know, I, I expect sure. him to be the – quarterback 15 or 16 so you could you could do worse but I don't think he's the upside option you're looking for in the playoffs against the Chargers all right Dalvin Cook yep da <laughs> Dalvin Cook sorry Ooh, Dalvin Cook 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 Melvin Gordon on the other side I've I've heard from a lot of people in the industry big fans of Melvin Gordon this week are you two on board I'm fine with them I, I mean I really I, People are big fans. I mean, I, I, I'm fine playing. Melvin Gordon's in your lineup, but yeah. I, I'm not projecting him to be like a running back one this week. He's been the RB9 over the last eight games, 17.5 opportunities per game. Pretty safe baseline. Yeah, he's had a safe baseline. He's really disappointed when it comes to those big monster games that he was giving you week in and week out last year. Uh, a lot of that's been, you know... The, the touchdown rate that he had last year was was pretty high. But, yeah, you're starting Melvin Gordon. You're starting Austin Eckler. Uh, but, I you know, this isn't a smash matchup. The Vikings are top 10 against running backs, giving up only 18.4 fantasy points per game to the position. In the, in the past two months, really the only team to really have a ton of success against the Vikings at the running back position was Seattle. Okay. Austin Eckler? Yeah, you, play, uh, you I, always I, play him. Yeah. Yep. Mike, William, Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. What do you do with the Chargers wide receivers? Mike Williams finally got into the end zone last week. He's actually had a couple of really impressive performances in a row. Keenan has kind of just not given you anything special, but he's been pretty reliable. Yeah, Keen I don't like the disparity between them. As far as the rank that, Correct, that Keenan like the seems like an rank. auto start and Mike Williams seems like a, a flex option. You think they're closer together? I do. I totally agree. Mike, Mike Williams is a sneaky good play this week yeah it's been pretty nice throwing the ball on minnesota for a lot of this year <laughs> i 
Yeah, I mean, last week, 63 to touchdown, 117 yards, 76 yards. Mike Williams has been – Mike Williams has been – pretty good just hasn't gotten the touchdown he had the Robert Woods syndrome so he just felt like ah, hey Mike Williams he he just kind of gives me some points but he never explodes Mike Williams is in a great spot here there's a handful of these situations where the the one two the disparity is so big and you just don't understand necessarily why based on the matchup John Brown Cole Beasley is another one of those right where you know John Brown gets all the credit and Cole Beasley is ignored week in and week out Diggs on the other side Adam Thielen you know, if Thielen's active, it's a simple question. Are you are you going to play him or are you going to worry about losing him during this game? There's a there's a huge combination here of things not in his favor. There's the fact that he's already come back and hurt himself. He's 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 missed obviously a lot of games. So now you worry about the injury. But then there's the matchup. This is, you know, the, we talked about how good the Chargers have been against quarterbacks. Well, that kind of affects the, their receiving options. They're even better against wide receivers as a top three defense, giving up only 22.2 points. So this is this is a pivot game. You, We said this before, but if you're in the playoffs right now and Thielen's on your roster, you have already found your replacement for the last couple weeks. I would probably roll with that replacement and give Thielen a prove-it week for health in a bad matchup. Yeah, I'd play Jamison Crowder from last night. I just, Ooh, oh, that's a great nice call. I would pivot to Crowder from, that's ye from yesterday. That's a great call. Would, right? you, would you pivot to Anthony Miller against Green Bay? Goodness. I think that's a little too yes. far down because Green Bay's been a very good secondary as well. Would you pivot to Darius Slayton against Miami? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I would okay. play yes. Slayton over Thielen. All right. I don't know what to do with Eli this week. I know, because he should be good. I'm really, he should be good. Well, we, we're in these conversations like when, with some of our leagues about Winston's hand and what happens if he's not active. Now, I figure we're probably just playing Winston, but you look at Ryan Fitzpatrick, you look at Eli Manning, I think there's a lot of reasons to like Eli Manning. But do you have, do do I you have, have the what gumption? It yes. Do you have the <laughs> intestinal fortitude? Would you play yes. Aaron Rodgers at home against Chicago, or would you play the Eli Manning opportunity? Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. I mean, I can't because I cut him. I followed the plan. But if I could pick him back up. So he's I'm, hanging out with Eli Manning on the waiver wire is what he's doing right now. I – oh, that's – you're mean. I'm playing Eli. You're mean. That's a <laughs> terrible question to ask me. I think I'd play Eli Manning. I think I would. Hunter Henry, you start. Kyle Rudolph, um, I think you can move on. He's been uh, great while Thielen has been absent. But this isn't a good matchup. If Thielen is back, I'm not going to. And the, the latest update, Chad Graff, he covers the, the Minnesota Vikings. They've said, barring a setback, the Vikings are, are currently planning to have Adam Thielen. They didn't rename setbacks Thielens? Bar oh, barring oh. A, All right. Falcons at 4 and 9. 49ers at 11 and 2. Games in San Francisco. 49ers heavy favorites. It's 11 points. That's the spread, 48-point over-under. 49ers are just a great football team. They really are. Adam Lefko tweeted out, maybe just to contextualize it, they're the first team in NFL history to, to play three consecutive games with teams where their opponent was at an 800 winning percentage or better. They smashed the Packers by 29 points. They lost on a last-second field goal to the Ravens. Then they won the shootout against the uh New Orleans Saints in the Superdome in the Superdome yeah. that's just really impressive coaching play by Jimmy Garoppolo and, and company here we are in this matchup their defense has been more vulnerable in recent weeks at least to opposing quarterbacks but they still pressure the quarterback tremendously we know that Matt Ryan can't move around a lot and will get pressured and will get pressured quite a bit uh he does have Julio Jones he does have Austin Hooper you probably have better things to do than than play Matt Ryan. That is probably your situation. the The risk is high, but I still like him this week yep. compared to the consensus quite a bit because of what we've seen over the last six weeks against San Francisco. And and Julio Jones, Julio, I know you listen to this podcast. Obviously, over his last eight games, he's the wide receiver thirty four. Julio, Julio Jones. This is serious. This is Are you, you're talking to him right I'm, now. Yeah, I'm speaking directly to the man. This is the semifinals of the fantasy playoffs. Julio Jones. 
If, we need you, buddy. If you could just give us one of your Julio games you need, right now. You need to go in that phone booth. And then and then again next week. But this and, week. And you need to come out <laughs> ba dressed back as Julio Touchdown Jones. Yes. Don't you come out of that phone booth <laughs> until you are dressed head to toe the, as Julio Touchdown Jones. Which is the exact same uniform he normally has, but he wears a little mask. But he gets, he, he's got a mask <laughs> and uh, like the visors on the helmet, and then yeah. he scores a touchdown. Yeah, and he always scores such. I look, Richard Sherman's out of this game. They're hoping he returns in Week 16, but he's not going to be there. The secondary, the defense, they're beat up, and they've been vulnerable. Julio should be able to surprise. Julio hasn't scored since Week Three. He's doing it again. He's he's Julioing. <laughs> Come on, well, he, Mr. He, Jones. Missed, he missed some time. Mike, he didn't score at all when he was missing time. Yeah, I'm, I look. Yeah, this but should then be, the other games where he I know <laughs> this should be a good matchup for Julio. You've got no Calvin Ridley, better than you think. No Muhammad Sanu. Julio is obviously a, a, a superstar NFL wide receiver. So this, the, I mean, everybody like playing Justin him. Watson level. I would. I mean, go you that far. you just called them. You just named them the same thing. I just want you to know that you named Julio Jones and Justin Watson the exact same thing. I apologize <laughs> to Justin Watson. Oh gosh, <laughs> I would be trying to find other options than Devonta Freeman. You will have a floor with him in terms of total work, but this is a 49ers defense that gives up 14 points to the opposing. You know, to opposing running backs. We saw some Brian Hill last week. You break up 14, 15, 16 points across. Devonta Freeman and, and Brian Hill, you're not happy with your start. Yeah, right now the D line is still the strength of the San Francisco 49ers uh, offense or defense, and um, the offensive line is one of the weaknesses for the Falcons. So that's that's a concerning matchup. On the other side, Jimmy Garoppolo looks like a really good play. I mean, I don't know what it is about me that is hesitant to believe. Uh, I, I, you know. I, I am. I, 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 I am I am every too. time I get a Garoppolo V someone question, I'm I'm usually going the other way and I'm starting to second guess myself because Garoppolo, the only thing he has done lately is show us that he can absolutely be a good fantasy option. He's gotten it done game after game, and now this is a very plus matchup. In a game where I think Atlanta will keep up. Exactly. I mean the Garoppolo A little bit. Garoppolo should be a quarterback that is so started he's locked and loaded for me. Okay, and I I think Jason, I'm I'm looking over at what he has done, trying to find a reason why, because I have the same feelings as you, but I think that comes from either he was great, or he he tanked your quarterback position and you had a huge disadvantage against your opposition because it was like five. He was quarterback quarterback five against the Saints, thirty one against the Ravens. He had a couple good games, but then twenty two against Seattle. 20 against Carolina. Like, well, yeah, gets, but you're skipping when he was the number two, no, the number three, and the but number that's 12. What, no, that's what I'm saying. Is it, he wasn't quarterback 14. He wasn't quarterback 13. He wasn't like a fringe, oh, I'm, I'm okay. I got outscored at the quarterback position, but it's not bad. It's either he is great or you, you're you minus seven points at the quarterback position. It, it's, it's more than that too, though, Mike, because we sit here and we talk about players that lose their pass catchers to injury – well, he added a superstar in sure. Emmanuel Sanders, but then he went out injured. He's averaging seven more points per game with Emmanuel Sanders. You have uh, just a dynamic receiving court. Debo has taken a step forward in recent weeks. Kittle's the best tight end in football, arguably. And then you have more health in the backfield, what Mostert's been able to do. Matt Burita coming back. Tevin Coleman is there. I'm, I'm taking the over in this game. I really am. Hmm. What I, is, I it's at 48, so... I mean, I the the Forty ers are projected to score twenty nine point seven five points, and I I think that they're going to put a put a whooping. Hmm. Yeah, and then Raheem Mostert is the best running back play on this team this week. Yes, I'm confidently starting him. Uh, I I believe he's you know he's been the quarterback twelve four and four in the last three weeks. I've shared a lot of uh, Kyle Shanahan's comments on. Are you talking about Raheem Mostert? Yes. Okay. You said quarterback, so I was confused. Mm, that's interesting. Par for the course. <laughs> um, yeah, Kyle Shanahan's been talking about needing to get him the ball more and that he's just he's just flat earned it, and we've seen it. Tevin Coleman has gone bye-bye, and so I think uh, Raheem Mostert should get enough carries. If he gets 12 carries, um, <laughs> 12 touches, Like I think he's going to have a good game.
He has. I think Matt Breida has a chance to surprise this week as well. Yeah, where my my hesitancy to get behind Raheem Mostert, who I I do not disagree. I think he, at least at this point, is he's the best running back on the team. He will be. He's the best fantasy option on this team. But in that run where he's been a superstar quarterback for fantasy the last three weeks, he's also a running back. Did <laughs> did I say it too? You did. You both said quarterback. Oh man, he's gonna he's gonna throw something this week. Well, the whatever. You heard it here first. Quarterback. Regardless, he's doing that on such limited work with two other options on the team that it just freaks me out to like be you you are boldly bearing your chest for Raheem Mostert. He has the same number of averaging twelve carries and two targets in that three game span. He has the and that same, includes a game with nineteen carries. He has the same number of fifteen yard or more rushing carries, leading the league, tied with Christian McCaffrey, who has uh, the opposite workload. So I I, I, I just that, I believe man. in the talent. I believe in the matchup. I believe in Shanahan. I I think he's going to get more work this week. Okay. Okay. Uh, would you play Kenyon Drake or Matt Breida? Bre uh, Drake. Oh, Drake. I thought you were saying Mostert. All right. Julio Jones, we talked about him. Emmanuel Sanders. You got to play Emmanuel Sanders. Man, 28%, 25% target share the last two weeks since he's returned. Debo Samuel, I think he's a flex option this week as well. He's so involved. He gets a couple of carries every game. He gets screen passes. He's scored recently. He's going to be guarded by cornerback Isaiah Oliver who is allowing the second most yards after catch in the league, which is a Debo specialty. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And then uh, Austin Hooper, I like him this week quite a bit, so much so that I made him my start of the week. And then George Kittle, yep, yep, yep. Rams, 8-5, and five, Cowboys, 6-7. and seven. Rams are one-point favorites on the road in Dallas, 49 point over under. I like the Rams in this game to continue their uh, – I don't know, momentum. Did yeah, you know the, that the Cowboys, resurgence. the line opened with the Cowboys favored by four? What? Yeah, and now the Rams are favored by one. That's one of the largest movements I can remember. Why? Uh, why is it moved? Or why? Yeah, why would they have opened as four-point favorites and it moved? It would, well, it moved because everyone started betting on yeah. the Rams. Yeah, that's insane. Because yeah, I would bet I was, on the Rams. I was just trying to figure out what injury happened and unhappened in that span. No, it, I've never seen a line move that much. If, that, if it moves that's five a very points. Line, it, it could have something to do with that Dallas is 0-6 versus teams with winning records. Could have to do with Mike's start of the week, Jared Goff. Oh, my, yes! My start of the week, Cooper Cup. Mike's start of the week, Tyler oh, Higby. Yes. <laughs> just imagine if Jared Gurf had Jared Kuk. <laughs> Just imagine what he could do. Our show would never get done. It would be three hours long of us just being buffoons. Going, you guys see Jared Gurf, the Jared Cook. Jared Cook, so good. Mix him a blowout. I think you're right, Mike. I think it would <laughs> never. I don't think we'd the ever. The show would never end. It would become a new show. It would be breaking down two players <laughs> every week. That's what it would be. Cuke -de -cuke. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Jared Goff leading the league in 20-plus yard passing plays, 4.6 per game. Big opportunities for Cooper Cup, for Robert Woods. Tyler Higby, you like him to continue even if Everett's back, Mike, or no? No, it, it's the start of the week was based off of I'm projecting. I don't think Everett's out there. I'm projecting Everett out. He didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday with, with the knee injury, and I think he'll be out again. All right, and then looking at uh, Todd Gurley, he's in your lineup. Dak on the other side at home. Dak's just been too good to sit, I think, for fantasy purposes. I don't think you can go away from him here at home. He's been better at home. Amari Cooper's been better at home. What do you do with the peripheral options in Dallas, though? You know you're playing Zeke, but what about Gallup? I think Gallup is, is a good play. <clears throat> you expect Amari Cooper to get Ramsey. So Cooper scares me a little bit, but like you said, you're, you're, you're playing him. I do have worries and hesitations there, but that should mean a few more targets going Michael Gallup's way. And he's he has looked really good this season. He's had plenty of solid games and uh, passed the eyeball test. So I'm confident playing. I mean, if if Dak is going to have a good game and Cooper's going to have Ramsey, then Gallup has to step forward if they want a chance to win. Gallup this game. has double digit targets in three of his last five games, and he's coming off that game ten targets, six receptions, 109 yards against Chicago. All right, Sunday night football. What on earth do you do with this one? The Bills at nine and four, Steelers at eight and five. It's a great real life matchup. The Steelers are one and a half point favorites. 
He's a 35 and a half point over under, which is ultra low. Woof. That's an 18 to 17 type of game. So for fantasy purposes, the story is much different than my own like intrigue. Like I, I want to see this football game. Yeah. I think it's going to be pretty exciting, and the Steelers can put themselves in a very strong position to make the playoffs if they can win at home against Buffalo. Their defense has been so outstanding over the last two months. Both of these defenses have been so good that it makes it very difficult to start any options. I feel like Josh Allen is a guy that's been so reliable. He doesn't just destroy you with a terrible week because of his rushing floor, but what is he going to get here? Is he going to get a one touchdown? You know, you're hoping for two. Devin Singletary has been unbelievable. He's been a top 10 running back since he took over at the start. But what's he going to do? The, the, the ceiling across everybody here is so limited. Where I'm staying away from John Brown and Cole Beasley, I'm preferring to pivot away from Josh Allen. Singletary is probably someone you have to start at the running back position. Singletary's in for me. Um, I, I mean, so few points expected to be scored here. Uh, I, you know, I, I do, I want to be in on Deontay Johnson because he looked so good last week. But then you got the Duck Hodges against the the Bills defense. It's like. Ah, I just this is a kind of a stay away from game. Bills against fantasy quarterbacks third. Bills against fantasy wide receivers fourth. Against a team that their passing attack is anemic at best. I'm willing to play Devin Singletary. I know the touches will be yeah, there in the I'm, opportunity. I'm in. I'm in with you, James Conner. I uh, I think at this point you expect him to be active and to start in this game. He probably has the same mindset that I have with Devin Singletary on the other side, where it's a hesitant, possibly ceilingless. Start at the position. The Bills can be beaten on the ground. I mean, this is one of those things where if you told me, you guarantee me that James Conner plays the game, starts, and plays the whole game, does not get re-injured. I would, be, I would actually I'd be talking him, about James yeah. Conner's a really good play. I'm just afraid and hesitant because of injury. So this might be one of those playoff, uh, you know, plays where you go, I'm I'm taking my shot that he's going to play the whole game, and he's going to be a really good fantasy asset. He should... If he plays this whole game, he's going to be a good fantasy player. Yeah, the the hard part at the running back position, if you're if you're pivoting, I mean, you're playing you're playing guys like Sony, Peterson, Laird. I mean, would would you play any of those three guys over James Conner? I would Sony, not. Sony, Peterson, Laird, probably not. But I just to speak to your point, Jason, Buffalo has not been giving up big fantasy points fantasy performances to running backs in, in a while now. And it was in matchups where you kind of thought that it was more likely that they would, you know, facing Baltimore, facing Dallas, facing Denver. Those are all matchups that you kind of thought would have been smash plays against them. They're just a really great defense. So I think your ceiling mixed with the injury does bring some concern to Connor. Uh, if you had any question about Connor being active with this being a Sunday night game and they're not really being solid pivots, like Benny Snell alone in this game against Buffalo no, no, is no. terrifying. I would go Laird in the morning if I had doubt about Connor. And when you brought up those three names, that's fair. Uh, John Brown, Cole Beasley. Like I said, there's been quite a disparity between them. Beasley scored in six of eight games. Vulnerability, if there is some on the Steelers' secondary side, it's to the slot position. It's not on the outside. Cole Beasley, I think, has. You know, not a lot of upside here either because the defense is so good, the over under is so low. But uh, I wouldn't like, f I'm not favoring Brown to Beasley. Let's put it that way. As the Cole Beasley truther of this show, I don't want to play him no. this week. No, I don't, I don't want to either. And you're not touching the tight end position. Duck Hodges is off the board. Juju's not going to play. Basically, you're playing James Conner and Devin Singletary unless you've got great options. And yeah. Man, and move, then the, move along. Do we? And then the Josh Allen. Where are you with? I'm preferring to move away from Josh Allen. I know that the he's been great as of late. I mean, you're talking in the last five weeks. Josh Allen is the quarterback three. But the but when he played a bad defense in in Baltimore, a good defense. A, well, you, a bad matchup. Yes, a, a good defense. Um, he was the quarterback twenty nine. Yeah. Colts at six and seven, Saints at ten and three. The Monday night football matchup, Saints eight point favorites. It's a forty six and a half point over under. Drew Brees was the number one quarterback last week. I feel like maybe as a kind gesture for years of 
playoff disappointments that we received, even when we thought he had great matchups. Last week he had a horrible matchup, so you might have sat him. So maybe that isn't very nice. Right. Maybe that's pretty mean. This was an epic troll. But I want to talk about the tight ends here. Because oh. Jared Q. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Back it, to you, Andy. Isn't he facing Jack Gioyle? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, the reality here is, uh, I mean, what's funny is the Colts have been a pretty good defense against quarterback. Now, last week, you saw that Jameis Winston, the number two quarterback on the week, torched the Colts. Uh, and Drew Brees They've coming off. They've been getting off torched of, for uh, a while. Yeah, now. so that's that's what I'm saying. I think this is this is a matchup that should be pretty good for Drew Brees. One thing we did see last week that I want to bring up and has raised my uh, ranking on Zach Pasco is the fact that last week the Saints got eviscerated by Emmanuel Sanders, who was you know we talked about him on the show. Zach Pascoe's lining up in the slot a ton. I mean, yep. he's, he's there over 40% of the time. Pascoe has his risks. I mean, because mostly because he's, he's Zach Pascoe. But there, you can beat them. Yep. Yeah, w earlier on in the week we had talked about, you know, is there concern going to him? What's going to happen with Marshawn Lattimore? But the fact that Pascoe's slot numbers are higher than uh, I had recalled, I think that he is an okay play this week. And you're going to have to keep up because we all assume that the Saints will be able to score because they're able to score on everybody. Yeah, they need to score more than 46 points to win, though. That's one of their. <laughs> that's what I've. That's what I've heard. But they don't need Alvin Kamara to do it. Apparently. Now, but how many times has Alvin Kamara scored more than 15 fantasy points this year? More than 15. Oh I'm going to guess. Have you already seen the answer? No, Jason? I have not. Okay. I have not. I'm going to guess three. You would be right. It's three times. It's not. Do you know how many times he did it last year? Uh, 16 games minus uh, I'm gonna say 15 <laughs> 12 okay. 12 times last year yeah it's not been good and now this is a bad matchup I mean the Colts against running backs are top five they've got a, a you know a, a great run D on um, b both ways right the Saints are top five the Colts are top five at stopping the run they're both porous in the secondary which that usually means that there is a lot more game to play what I mean by that is like when when their game kicks off and everyone else's game kicks off at the same time it's one of those where it's like the the following games are in the first quarter and you're like well, the Saints game's still going yeah this is crazy there's just so many plays that take place and this appears to be one of these matchups so I think this is going to be a lot of fantasy points to pass catching options are you a fan of Marlon Mack this week Mike uh a fan are you Marlon Mike this week I like that. <laughs> you liked that one? I did like that one. Marlon Mike. If you if you are in if on you Marlon Mike. If you are in on Marlon Mack, you'd be you Marlon say, Mike. I'm a Marlon Mike this week. Yeah, that's a good that's that's fine. I'm that's something that. you would do. No. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> are you in on him or not? I'm in and he's in my lineup. He's I'm, a Marlon Mike. <laughs> more like Marlon Mick. Yeah. Mm, that's true. Yeah. I mean I'm yeah. I'm playing him. <laughs> Would you rather play Marlon Mack or Devin Singletary? Because I see similarities right. with both yeah. guys. Both guys are really good real-life running backs. I'll take Singletary. And you'll take Singletary, can I guess, on the basis of just more receiving uh, work yeah. from time to time? I would take Mack on the basis of more points in the game. I, I think this is one where you're going to have... I know you mean that by team points, but it sounds better if it's like a slam, like... I'm taking him on the basis he's going to score more fantasy points. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, that's what I meant. So I think they're very, very close. I do. I agree with that. Um, I probably I probably lean Mac. Man. It's very, very close. I do have I have Singletary currently higher in my rankings. What do you guys make of the news that T.Y. Hilton has returned to a limited practice? Nothing. Yeah. All right. Good for him. The Colts aren't going to play him until he's 100%, and he's not going to be 100% by kickoff. Yeah. Yeah. It, makes, it sucks. Jack Doyle, he's always out there. That's one of his best features. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he's, he plays on pretty much all the snaps, and they need pass-catching options. I think Jack Doyle is – a, a fine enough start. I mean, he's probably got as good options as any 
after the top you know six or seven tight ends to low finish end tight as end a tight end low one end tight this end week. Yeah. Gesicki or Doyle? I'll go Gesicki. Doyle. Doyle. I don't know. I'm going to chase the points for Kasicki. And then we've mentioned it, but you know, it's Monday Night Football. You need to be trending the right direction. Make sure that you're paying attention to the news. Pay attention to what uh, we get out there on social media. But on Monday night, I really want to play Kuk. <laughs> oh man, Kuk should Kuk should have a touchdown in this game. I'm I'm calling it now. He's going to do the Kuk <laughs> Kukin in the end zone. Got to do your cuking by the puke. <laughs> yes. Got to do the cuking by the well, puke. I, we're talking <laughs> all this, this, the, all this <laughs> seasonal stuff going on. We're gonna we're about to hop over and do our video for YouTube, giving away over $2,500 worth of autographed sports memorabilia to listeners, supporters at jointhefoot.com because it, it's the giving time of year. It is. But then that made me remember, like, every year, my mom always drops off fresh – Christmas cukies. Oh, delicious cukies. You know. <laughs> <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> Ballers on a Budget, presented by FanDuel. Last week was a, was a smash... Smashing success, Mike. It was. It was so much, so much smashing occurred yeah. in this segment. Emmanuel uh, Sanders, Zach Pascal, Ian Thomas were the ballers on a budget picks last week. And guess what? My pick is Ian Thomas again. I wondered if you. Oh yeah, he is. He is in there again. <laughs> You're darn right. The price has gone up substantially, but Kyle Allen goes to the tight end position. This, of course, is if Greg Olson is out. This is. This is hinges on that, but Ian Thomas, fifty three hundred against Seattle, the second worst team against fantasy tight ends. We don't it doesn't get the love that it deserves because the Cardinals are so horrifically bad, and that's who everyone talks about. But Seattle, equally bad, or just a little bit, a little bit better against the tight end. But Ian <laughs> Thomas, fifty three hundred, it's still a great price. Yeah, last week I went Zach Pascal for sixty one hundred. That worked out well. This week, guess what? I'm going with Zach Pascal. He's <laughs> 6400 the, the price is Let's not go updated. Let's back to the will. Hey. I mean, the, the price is not updated All right, well Somebody enough. give me the price on Emmanuel <laughs> Sanders right now. <laughs> but let me throw out another name for you here because it's very rare. I hope the, you mean throw out. Like throw the name out into a trash can. I'm going to throw the name out into the glorious listener's ear so that they can go <laughs> and, and, and win money on the back of a superstar. Oh, gosh. You can't get Stab. cheaper than $4,500. It is the minimum on FanDuel. And Justin Watson, superstar, is going to be. Here's the deal. If Scotty Smith is active, don't play Justin Watson. Here's the thing, guys. If like Scotty Miller? Scott, him too. Scotty Miller is active. Don't play him. But otherwise... Do you uh, notice something, Mike? Every Justin, time, every time there's a feature, yeah, like a negative thing about Justin Watson, Jason looks at it like a cool feature of Justin Watson. Yep. For instance, he's the cheapest of any possible wide receiver that you can acquire. Price wrong. Price right. Yeah, uh, but no, B Pascal is my legit one, and if you want to go out there and win a tournament with just a glory play, that's Justin Watson. If Scotty Miller is is gone. All right, I don't mind. Uh, I, I think both of those are great. I can't go back to the well on Sanders, although I don't mind his price. It's like sixty nine hundred this yep, week. It is. Last week it was fifty nine hundred. I'm going to go with the guy I think is a top five finisher. Yeah, I, I like your pick. And it's Chris Carson at seventy four hundred. That's three thousand less than Christian McCaffrey. That's the twelfth highest at the running back position, and it's behind Raheem Mostert. That's, I cannot fathom. That's ridiculous. A universe where what? I would start Raheem Mostert over Chris Carson yeah. against Carolina. Raheem yeah, Mostert true. is my start of the week, and I, I there there are isn't that shocking? That's shocking. There are only two players I would possibly start over Chris Carson this week: Justin Chris, Watson, Justin Watson, <laughs> and Justin Watson. <laughs> Uh, but you know Christian McCaffrey, sure. Dalvin Cook, sure. Outside of that, it's like there's there's other. I mean, Derrick Henry. Uh, Dude, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe. Henry probably. Calm down with the Mostert love. What is happening? I mean, Jason Del influences. Melvin Gordon is cheaper than Raheem Mostert. Yeah, I'm. I think that's kind of wild. Jason is influencing some pricing. I cannot confirm nor deny. Justin Watson going up to 10000 Just, Just you wait. <laughs> Don't miss your chance to win an all-expenses-pay trip. Participate with us. Jump in to the Fantasy Footballers Leaderboard Series. Go to fanduel.com slash ballers for details. 
Each and every week, a brand new competition. Throw some of these names in there. Throw some of your favorite names in there. It's going to be fun this week. That's FanDuel.com slash ballers. You're playing Play for a trip. Playing for a trip to come out here. You play with us. Yeah. Uh, some injury updates that have taken place bef- uh, since the beginning of the show. Evan Ingram, not expected to play. That's not an update. That's a status quo. Devontae Parker, Albert Wilson, both practicing. They both. shedded their non-contact red jerseys, so they've progressed a step in the protocol, which is great. <laughs> is, is that a word? It's, it's totally not, but somebody wrote it yeah, in Yeah, <laughs> that's not a word. You just shed a jersey. You don't shedded a jersey, did right? You see, did you get past it? tense. So no, you guys, you some words the are snake? past tense in and of themselves. The snake shedded his skin. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Jason's sitting there going, yeah, he you did. You got Ron yeah, he did. I got it's Ron Burgundy. It's <laughs> underlined in our <laughs> doc. <laughs> in red. The, 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 the red squiggly, doesn't that mean emphasis? <laughs> doesn't that mean give it extra You say emphasis? it with conviction, he yes. They shedded their non-contact red jerseys. Yeah. Just like Justin Watson's going to have shredded what? the defense. I'm going to put, oh. a, I'm gonna put an the R in there. And now it's shredded their non-contact. They shredded oh. them. They put them in the shredder. <laughs> um, but that's that's good. This is a good sign that they can play Sunday. That doesn't mean they've <laughs> passed. But every single every single time when a player has had a concussion and then is active the following week, this is the process they go through. And oh. then this is big. All right, well, hold- Breaking news. Jameis Winston has resumed throwing a football. Okay. All right. That's great news. That's, that is. That's fantastic Let's news. go, Jameis. Our producers, because I, I, we can't let this go, our producers are <laughs> trying to bra- blame Cameron Wolf that they just copy-pasted the tweet. Oh. <laughs> so wait, do we have to body Cameron Wolf? Is that what you're saying? I guess. I think no. you just did. Oh. Yeah, you ju- looks like I think you, you did. just did. You did, Brooks. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, is it a word? Wait a minute here, guys. No. I just looked up shed, verb, past tense, shedded. What? Past no. participle, shedded. And if you don't believe that, I would never use participle. I'm clearly reading this. It's a word? In your face. No, no, no. I, sta- I don't think that's correct. Okay. I think maybe if you, you, know, you went to Home Depot and you went and built one of those the- things in the backyard, you just shedded your backyard. Okay. <laughs> Okay, the grammarist has an article how to use shed versus shedded properly. Don't use the word shedded. Sh- literally, the word shed is marked as past tense, as a verb that is past tense. So why does the word shedded exist? Because of people like Jason. That is it for this show. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Like I said, uh, is that video going up today, Al Borland? Maybe? Probably tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. Stay tuned. YouTube.com slash Fantasy Footballers. Goodbye. Good luck. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.